हेलो गाइस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट क्लिनिकल न्यूरोलॉजी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम सिम्टमोलॉजी सो स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट सिम्टम दैट इज वटाइगो सो वटाइगो इज डिफाइंड एज अ फीलिंग ऑफ स्पिनिंग समथिंग स्पिनिंग अराउंड एंड द कॉमन कॉज इज वेस्टिब्यूलर प्रॉब्लम नाउ कम टू द वाई गोट एज यू ऑल नो दैट अवर ईयर कंसिस्ट ऑफ कॉकियर एंड वेस्टिब्यूलर सिस्टम सो कॉकियर सिस्टम बेसिकली कंसर्न विद हियरिंग Vestibular system concerned with balance. So in what I go, there is a problem in our vestibular system. Now come towards the next symptom that is syncope. So syncope is defined as a loss of the consciousness and recovery when the patient is horizontal. Come to the whiteboard. Imagine this is Mr. A and a sudden syncope occur and the Mr. A is going to lose his consciousness. but he regain his consciousness when he lies in a horizontal plane so the mechanism of syncope is decrease in the cerebral blood flow now come to the example of mr a so mr a is in standing position so due to sudden syncope the blood flow from the brain decreases due to gravitational force but as soon as he lies flat he will regain his consciousness that's why the patient of syncope will regain consciousness when lies in a horizontal plane cause in horizontal plane the blood flow from the brain increases and in vertical plane the blood flow from the brain decreases cause of gravitational force so the example of syncope is vasovagal syncope and postural hypotension now come to the white board for the concept of vasovagal syncope So what is happening to the patient of vasovagal syncope due to some emotional stress there is a sudden drop in heart rate and blood pressure which lead to sudden decrease in the cerebral blood flow and hence syncope so this is the mechanism behind vasovagal syncope now come towards the concept of postural hypotension so postural hypotension is defined as decrease at least of 20 mm pressure in the systolic and at least 10 mm of pressure in the diastolic blood pressure when the person changes position from sitting to standing now come towards the third symptom of nervous system that is seizure which is defined as change in the brain electrical activity now come to the concept of epilepsy It is defined as recurrent seizures over months or years. So the patient is suffering from one attack of seizure and then the next attack of seizure and then few months after from the very next attack of seizure. So this type of recurrent attack of seizure is termed as epilepsy. So there are basically three type of seizures. Number one type is the first type is tonic clonic seizure, which is defined as jerky movement of the body with the loss of consciousness. So remember this in tonic clonic seizure there is a jerky movement of whole of the body with loss of consciousness you have to remember this now come towards the next seizure type that is jacksonian seizure which is defined as repeated contraction of face and hands so in jacksonian seizure you have to remember the word face and hand face and hand and in tonic clonic the whole body now come towards the third type of seizure that is psychomotor seizure in which there is hallucination and the patient loses consciousness so basically loss of consciousness in tonic clonic seizure and psychomotor seizure i have a mnemonic to learn all the seizure type with associated phenomena so the mnemonic for tonic clonic seizure is clown dancing in the bar so here the clown indicate clonic and uh, dancing is for the movement of the whole body as you will see the movement of the whole body in tonic clonic seizure and with beer is for the loss of consciousness as drinking beer is related with the loss of consciousness and so the mnemonic for the jacksonian seizure is michael jackson singing and waving hand so here the jackson uh, is for jacksonian seizure and singing is for the use of uh, face and uh, basically singing with mouth for the use of face and waving hand is for 
the typical finding of hand and face in the Jacksonian fever. So there is nothing special about psychomotor fever as the name, name indicates. There is a thing like hallucinating or seeing the thing which is not present. So there is no need of mnemonic here. Now come towards our next symptom, the motor weakness, which is defined as paralysis and paresis. Paralysis is defined as total loss of power or complete loss of power and paresis is defined as partial loss of power. So the power loss may indicate itself as monoplegia or hemiplegia. Monoplegia means weakness of one limb. Hemiplegia means weakness of half side of the body. And uh, it is usually seen in intracranial disease. Or it may manifest as paraplegia and quadriplegia. Paraplegia means weakness of both lower limb and quadriplegia means weakness of whole four limbs. Weakness of all body and whole four limbs is quadriplegia. And paraplegia and quadriplegia is usually seen in spinal cord lesions. So come to the concept of our whiteboard. If this is a patient of monoplegia, the problem is, is in one limb, for example, in this hand, okay? So, I am um, marking it with red. If this is a patient of hemiplegia, so the problem is in half side of body, full one half side is affected. Now, if this is a patient of biplegia, or you can say paraplegia, so the weakness in both lower leg. In paraplegia, there is weakness in both lower leg. And if this is a patient of quadriplegia, so the patient... So the weakness in both arms and both legs. So this is the difference in all the plegias. Now the another concept is if the weakness is due to any peripheral nerve disease. So mainly the peripheral nerve disease affect the distal muscles. So the distal muscles are muscles which control the movement and basically away from the, uh, you can say hand in this case. And if the disease is due to problem in muscle or uh, there is any muscle disease, it mainly affects proximal muscle first okay so this is basically a brief neurological symptomology so hope you like this and kindly subscribe my channel if you like this